Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Amanda. So in today's What's For Dinner video, I'm actually gonna be using this cookbook, Homestead Recipes from Amanda Retke. Um, if you have not heard of her, she is uh, Amanda from I Am Baker. She has like Instagram, she's a blogger, um, she's hilarious. You've gotta go watch her reels, they're so funny. So um, I'll have all her information linked below. Uh, but she sent me this cookbook. Um, this is not like, a sponsored video or anything like that but she just sent me the cookbook so that I could take a look at it and make some stuff out of it and share it with y'all and so I was happy to do that because her cookbook is awesome so I will have all that information linked in the description box um, these recipes were so delicious I know that y'all are gonna love them now this video is also really special because it's part of an open collaboration hosted by Southern Wife Everyday Life. I'll have her channel linked in the description box below as well as the entire uh, playlist. Make sure you go check it out. It's actually a cookbook collab. So lots of yummy recipes made from cookbooks that everybody has. So can't wait to see all those uh, recipes and those videos. Now, if you're coming over from the collab, welcome and welcome, of course, if you're returning. I'm so glad to have you here. If you're new, then, you, you know, I do all kinds of recipes, what's for dinners. It's really all about the food here. I would love to have you join my YouTube family, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. I'm always trying to plan some delicious and yummy recipes to share with y'all. But let's go ahead and get into this video and let me get these recipes going they're so amazing so let's get started with the skillet beer cheese bread and y'all this bread was so good i actually had planned on making it with the dill pickle soup that's in the recipe book but unfortunately my potatoes were bad i was so disappointed so i will definitely make that recipe though later and uh, share it with y'all because it sounds so good so we've just got some flour some baking powder salt that we mixed together and now we're adding our cheese and getting that mixed together well and then we're going to pour in 12 ounces of beer just make sure that beer is room temperature i actually forgot to do that and so i kind of sat it in some warm water for a little bit to kind of let it come up to temperature and once this is all mixed we're going to put it in our cast iron skillet we're going to kind of pat it out to where it's you know uh, one layer and pretty even and we're going to dot it with eight tablespoons of butter on top just kind of place it around evenly top it with the, some more shredded cheese and we're going to bake it in the oven at 375 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes just until it's like golden brown on top and then you're going to let it sit for a few minutes after it comes out just to let that butter soak back into the bread but y'all this was so good and super easy and quick to throw together i mean you could put this together in no time I love any kind of homemade bread thing like this that really comes together so fast to where, you know, um, it's almost easier than going to the store and buying something, you know, and I know sometimes they even have those mixes for like different breads, but really like so many of them throw together so easy, you can have them, you know, ready in just a flash. So, and then you know everything that goes in them, but here it is all done and I'm going to cut a piece and let y'all see inside of it. It's so fluffy and delicious. We served this with some leftover chili. It would be perfect with lots of different, you know, soups and things like that. So definitely something that is so tasty to have on hand. And honestly, it's just yummy to eat a slice of it too. So however you'd like to eat it is always good. Um, now, I won't have any of these recipes linked. Well, except for I think the dessert. I think, I, I think she has that on her blog. Um, so I'll link that one. But since this does, these do come from a cookbook, I will link the cookbook down below. And then that way y'all can check that out because this cookbook was amazing. Stay tuned for my review at the end of the video too. Next up, we have our meat raffle hot dish. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my onion chopped up. I've also got some corn and some macaroni sitting out there. Um, this goes together super fast, super easy. This was addictive. Oh my goodness. It was so good. I never thought about this combination together, but it's fantastic. And in Amanda's cookbook, she actually talks about there's like these meat raffles. And I had never heard of a meat raffle. So that's kind of where the name of the, this dish came from. But they sounded pretty cool. And I would definitely check one out if I ever had an opportunity. Um, so now I've got the, my onions in my pan. I'm just going to saute them for just a minute. Of course, you know, if y'all have been here for a while, you know that I freeze my ground beef like cooked in bulk. So I just, you know, thawed a little bit out in the microwave. And that's why I sauteed my onions a little bit first and then put my hamburger in there. And then we're going to go ahead and get that kind of mixed together well and add a little bit of garlic and saute that for a minute. Once that's done... We're going to go ahead and get in the rest of our ingredients, which is 
some whole milk, a can of cream and mushroom soup, some canned corn, and of course some salt and pepper to taste. Now I meant to ask y'all a minute ago when I was talking about the meat raffle, but let me know if you have meat raffles in your area. Like I said, those sound so cool, like reading about it in her cookbook. So definitely let me know if y'all heard of those before. Now we're not really cooking these ingredients anymore. It's just, you know, I may have still had the heat on just a little bit, but I turned it off shortly after. We're just kind of, you know, using the skillet to mix our ingredients together. And in a nine by 13 pan, we're going to have some elbow macaroni in there. And we're just gonna spoon this on top. You just wanna make sure that like all the elbow macaroni get completely covered, you know, so that you don't have any macaroni kinda, you know, that gets um, burnt or anything like that. As long as it's, you know, covered with this, then you'll be good. And now the elbow macaroni is not cooked. And I will say that that made such a difference in this casserole because, you know, sometimes if you're not careful, if you cook the macaroni a little too long, you can end up with kind of mushy noodles. And the noodles were like perfect texture in this. And I love that because you didn't even have to take the extra step of cooking the macaroni. So I loved, you know, dishes like that where you can just throw in, you know, rice or pasta or whatever and they're not cooked. And then that way they cook along with the dish and it just makes it a little, little easier, a little, you know, less steps to go through and everything. Now we're going to top this with some shredded cheese, cover it with foil, and it's going to bake at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. Then we're going to remove the foil and let it bake for another 15 minutes. This would also be super perfect to take to like, you know, someone who needs a meal or something like that because, you know, it's a pretty good amount of food and you really only need, you know, maybe a side or two with it, uh, you know, some vegetables of some sort to go along with it. And then you've got, you know, a super easy dinner uh, either for yourself or like if you want to, you know, uh, take it to someone as a meal because I think casseroles are always, you know, really nice and easy to take and you can always use like those disposable foil pans and and do that and that kind of you know helps too but here we're uncovering it like i said it's going to bake a little bit longer and then it's going to be ready to eat i cannot wait to make this again y'all i am so impressed with this cookbook i swear like i am so thankful i have it we will be definitely cooking more out of it because everything i've tried that's in this video has been fantastic and i've been so impressed with it and I just can't wait to try other stuff out of here because the one thing I do think is really, really cool is that there's a lot of recipes that are not um, things I've seen before, like this different stuff, you know, like, and I do feel like even though I love cookbooks and I love, you know, even if they have varieties of the same types of things, I feel like sometimes they can get to be a lot of the same. Uh, and this is, this one was, had a lot of different things in it that I hadn't seen. So I was really impressed, but I just served this with some green beans and it was amazing. So now we're going to make spaghetti pizza with homemade focaccia bread. Now I had actually never made focaccia bread, but I love it. So I was so excited to try this out. I've just got some warm water. I'm adding some yeast and some sugar in there. And we're going to let this sit for five minutes just so that it can kind of activate that yeast and get that ready. Now this, we're making our oil mixture. So I've got some olive oil. We're gonna add in some seasonings, which is some Italian seasoning, garlic and salt. And we're gonna get that mixed together. Now half of this is gonna go in our bread mixture and half of it's gonna be used to like grease our cast iron skillet. And that's what we'll bake our focaccia in. Now, like I said, I'd never made it, but this came together super easy. It was, you know, I think ye anything with yeast can be extremely intimidating to some people. I know it was for me for a long time, and I still sometimes hold my breath a little bit and think, is it going to turn out, <laughs> you know, but it, it has every time I've done it. So if you are nervous about working with yeast, I, I do recommend you give it a try and see because it's so fun to make these different breads. And so I just put my flour in there. And got it mixed together well and now i'm going to oil this bowl here and we're going to place that dough in here and let it rise i am going to cover it with like a you know a towel and then i actually placed it in my oven um, because my oven had been used a little earlier in the day so it's still just a tiny bit warm and i thought that would be a nice warm place for it to rise and you just want it to rise until it's doubled in size which is going to take about an hour and then we'll work on finishing it up now, while that's, you know, rising, I'm going to actually get started on my spaghetti sauce. So I've got some chopped onion that I'm going to saute here. Again, I'm utilizing my cooked ground beef that I have in the freezer. So uh, if you didn't have that, you obviously would, you know, want to go ahead and brown those together with the onion and stuff. I um, also have some green peppers going in here. I'm just going to saute those until the veggies get soft. 
and then I'm going to add in my hamburger meat as well as my garlic and I'm going to cook that for just a minute then we're going to add in our tomato sauce our tomato paste and I used crushed tomatoes instead of diced tomatoes the recipe actually called for diced tomatoes but I'm not a huge fan of like big chunks of tomatoes like and stuff like this so I thought I would do the crushed instead and that worked just fine and we're also going to add in some oregano basil just a pinch of sugar and this is all going to simmer anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour and so it'll be done by the time our um our bread gets you know ready so or at least ready ready to bake so we'll let that go and of course you can just keep it on warm until your bread finishes baking it only takes about 20 minutes for the bread to bake so this is all done you know fairly close together your biggest thing is your hour waiting for the bread to rise and that that's pretty much it now if you're wise you will boil your noodles your uh, spaghetti noodles the last you know 10 minutes or so of everything's cooking time so like once you get that you know bread in the oven i was not smart about that i totally forgot to start the noodles and so it took a little longer but make sure you plan wisely and then you'll have it all done at the exact same time this is the other half of that oil mixture and i'm just greasing my cast iron skillet with it making sure i get that all everywhere and then we're just going to place our dough in there and just kind of pat it out and make sure it's even also with focaccia you want to kind of dimple it and so that's going to be those little wells that are going to hold the olive oil so use your fingers to kind of get in there and make little kind of marks you know so that it can hold that olive oil and um you know in those little kind of indentions it's really kind of fun to do that too because you're just like you know squishing with the dough it's like back playing play-doh or something again you know back when i was a kid uh, I did not use a whole lot of extra oil on the top because I actually had some kind of coming around the side. So I used some of it, uh, but obviously, you know, use as much as you like for uh, everybody probably likes different amounts on focaccia. But uh, now here it is out of the oven, all nice and golden brown and toasty. Y'all, this was so good. I'm going to make that focaccia again and probably like use it for sandwiches or something. And here's my pasta and my sauce. So that's all ready. And we're going to kind of assemble it like a little slice of pizza with some noodles and sauce on top of it. For a really pretty presentation you can also do that in this you know cast iron skillet and just put the noodles on top sauce on top it looks really cool it's like that in the cookbook but we did it separately this way but y'all so good another another hit for us so now we're getting into dessert we're gonna make an apple bundt cake i have never made an apple cake i have made like you know some quick breads that had apples in it things like that but nothing like this i was super excited to try this I've got some oil, some eggs, and sugar, and a little bit of vanilla going in here, and we're just going to mix that together well until it's kind of fluffy and really good and combined, and that'll just take a couple of minutes. We'll sit that to the side and kind of get started on our dry ingredients, which is going to be some flour, baking soda, cinnamon, and a little bit of salt, and of course you want to whisk those together well. I think she mentioned uh, sifting it together. I didn't do the sifting part because I had heard like if you whisk it together that's kind of doing the same thing not 100% sure on that so don't take that um, as gospel but that's what you know I usually do is just whisk it together and it worked fine so I didn't have any issues with it and now we're going to just combine our dry ingredients with our wet ingredients and then the last step will be to fold in our apples and this is just three Granny Smith apples uh, chopped up into kind of you know chunk pieces and then we're going to get it all mixed together and then put it in our greased bunt pan. You definitely want to make sure that bunt pan is greased well because I tell you, every time I flip those things over, I'm like, is it going to come out? Is it going to come out? And I'm always so happy when you kind of either feel or hear that kind of funk. And, you know, you're like, yes, it all came out, you know. Now this is going to bake in a 325 degree oven for about 55 to 70 minutes. I think mine may have ended up taking just a little it was either right at 70 or maybe just a little over it you just want to keep kind of checking that you obviously don't want to get it too done but you want to check and make sure that it is fully done throughout so you want like a you know a long toothpick or like something like that that you can stick in and make sure that it comes out clean um if it still comes out with batter in it or anything like that of course just let it keep going and i usually try to check it you know in about five to seven minute increments so here I am flipping it over. I wanted to show that for y'all because that uh, I was so happy because it all came out one piece and I was so excited. I have had pretty good luck with that. I usually actually have my youngest grease my pans. He is like a miracle worker with grease and pans. I don't know what it is, but nothing sticks when he does it. So he's like the, you know, 
the go-to person in our house for grease in a pan. So now I'm just making my caramel glaze. I've got some heavy cream, some brown sugar, some butter, and I accidentally put the vanilla in now. I was supposed to actually do that later. The vanilla should actually go in once all this is cooked because we're actually going to like bring it to a boil. Just let it boil for just a second, remove it from the heat, and let it sit for just a little bit to thicken. And while it's sitting, you know, as soon as you pull it off, you're supposed to put the vanilla in there. I, it still tasted great, so I, did, I think it was fine. But so if you mess up like me, then it, you'll be okay. <laughs> so I'm just drizzling that caramel glaze on top of this cake. Y'all, this cake was so good. My daughter, she said it literally made her mouth water. Like she tried it. And she was like, oh my gosh, she's, and she doesn't say that about anything. So this is like her favorite cake now. She literally said she wants this for her birthday next year. This cookbook was so awesome. I cannot, I mean, it's really one of my favorites now. I, I just love it. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, Amanda is an amazing cook. So I was so glad to get to try these recipes. So make sure y'all stay tuned for my full review of this cookbook. We enjoyed it so much. And also don't forget to check out that playlist linked in the description box below hosted by Southern Wife Everyday Life. So guys, I hope y'all have enjoyed those recipes. I know we sure did. Thank you, Amanda, again for sending me your cookbook. We are enjoying it so much. I can't wait to make more stuff out of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take y'all through a little bit of a review of her cookbook, show you some of the beautiful pictures in there, talk about it just a minute so you can kind of see my thoughts. As I've said, we absolutely loved it. So definitely highly recommend it. And let's go ahead and get to that now. Okay, so here is Amanda's cookbook. Again, like I said, her um, blog is called I Am Baker. And I think I already told y'all this, but in case I didn't, you really need to follow her on Instagram if you don't already, because she does some hilarious like reels and stuff like that. She's just so funny. Um, it, it's just like makes my day sometimes just to watch those because it just makes me laugh. Um, but this is her cookbook. It's a beautiful hardback book. Um, her intro was so awesome because it really gave me like more of a window into who she is as a person. She just seems like so sweet and you know that her family is so important to her. I loved reading about like her her kids and her husband and everything so that was really awesome. Uh, I've got the recipes I made tabbed but like you can see all the pretty pictures and I think there was a picture for every recipe so it's really awesome and I will say let me show y'all the let's see this is the dill pickle chowder that i had planned to make but unfortunately my potatoes were bad so i will definitely make this um she talked about that she wasn't sure it sounded good when she first you know heard of it but then she loved it so um so i think that it would be really uh, great to try and i do love pickles so um i'm looking really forward to trying that but like I said, I can't recommend this recipe book enough. She's just got so many delicious recipes in here. It's just a beautiful cookbook. Um, I'll have it linked below so that y'all can, you know, take a look for it. But again, just really recommend it highly. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out Southern Wife Everyday Life. I'll have her channel linked below as well as the entire cookbook collab playlist. So make sure you check out those videos. I'm so excited to see what everybody made. I hope y'all have a blessed day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one.